We have one team who I think can be genuine contenders this year, that's Liverpool, uh, because they have a, a much better squad, no matter what people say. They have a squad to deal with all competitions. And then we've got another team in, in Spurs who are, let's be honest, the pretenders. Uh, and a manager in Pochettino who's been lauded, who have had some good results, particularly against Liverpool last year at Wembley. But I don't think, uh, certainly not for me, we'll be in the title race. So I think we've got one genuine title contender here, potentially in Liverpool. Let's see how they can handle uh, going to, to Wembley and try and put in last year out the head. I'm guessing that you're thinking and your reasoning for having a cracker of a game is that these are two teams that like to get after each other. Well, yes, and I don't think that's a completely... No, <laughs> well, well, that's what I'm getting. Right that's what I'm getting to, that the idea that Liverpool likes to play with high energy and sometimes a frenetic pace, and that Spurs at times likes to do that as well. In my opinion, it would be a mistake for Spurs to try to play that way, to try to out Liverpool Liverpool. That is not what you want to do. You don't want to go chasing Liverpool because if you do, then it comes to the point to where you're trying to do something that they're better than you. Mm. That, what Liverpool does very well, they do better than Spurs. And Spurs, they have to be able to control the pace of the game. Slow it down when you can, pick your moments when you can pressure, but don't get in a racing match with Liverpool because if you do, you're going to lose. Gav, I'm looking forward to this game. Am I wrong? No, I don't, I don't think you're wrong. I mean, I, I, I think either way, we're going we're gonna to learn something important here. I mean, this is Liverpool's really first real test of the season. I think psychologically, it also matters that when these two, two teams met, uh, I think back in October of last season, uh, Liverpool really got their rear ends handed to them. I think it was 4-1. It could have been more. Um, so, you know, you, you, you win at Wembley, I think you've broken through a big psychological barrier. From Spurs' perspective, we need to see how Pochettino can maybe change things up after the, uh, uh, I thought, what was a, a poor performance uh, against Watford. How does he deal with the issues with, with Dele Alli and, and obviously Hugo Lloris? Uh, and more broadly, Harry Kane, who's, who's playing, but perhaps hasn't been playing on the same level, mm. not in terms of production, uh, but just in terms of performance since before his injury last March. I, I'm actually with Mourinho on, on, on this one, seriously. What happened here is a part of what happened here. Rashford went away, scored a couple of goals for England, uh, got some uh, playing time in his preferential position, uh, and all of a sudden, every Tom, Dick and Harry was going, oh, this guy has to be getting more game time playing as a striker, and, you know, this is bad for England because he's not playing. The old arrogance, England, 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 England... You'll not even get a game for England in that position because Harry Kane's playing there. But it just it just smacked of the, well, we need to get him playing because England needs him in that position and it's not the best for Marcus. He's 20 years old. In an ideal world, he'd be, in my opinion, in an ideal world, he'd be playing every game through the middle. Right. In an ideal world. What he's getting at the moment, he's playing for one of the biggest clubs in the world. They're, they're, they're fighting in four competitions every year, including the Champions League. He's getting game time. He's getting goals, not as many as he'd want, and he's getting some games in that position, just not as many as he wanted. I personally think there's no better place for him at the moment than to be playing there and gaining experience. If he was 23 or 24, I would say yes, but he's not. Well, all I would suggest is that if you're Jose Mourinho, one of your responsibilities as a manager and as a coach is to get the very best of your players. And he was there in Wembley, and he saw Marcus Rashford playing through the middle, and performed the way he did against one of the best teams in the world in Spain. So if I'm the manager, I'm thinking, how can I get that from that player, that very same player, consistently over the weekends with Manchester United, with my team? I, I don't make it about my ego. I don't make it about the player. I make it about the performance. How do I get that player to perform like that for me at Manchester United? And if that's down the middle, then maybe that's something you take a look at. And so, but he's not going to—he's not going to play him in place of Lukaku. Well, no, but the then, problem. but then, well, but then that's when you have to have flexibility. You can play—you can play Lukaku as as a top striker, and then have Marcus Rashford run off of him. What's wrong with that? It's not like Manchester United have been killing the league where they're of offensive output. It's not like they're scoring goals for fun. It's not like they're playing incredibly well. It's not like they're getting results with consistency. So. What is the harm in trying to find a solution for Marcus Rashford if he can provide you with the same sort of productivity he just showed for England? It doesn't mean that he's going to do it all the time. But if he's hot and Manchester United need goals, maybe Rashford could be part of the answer. You may, of course, have been 100% start of the season. So it's one of the 
surprise many. Unbeaten, two wins and a draw. Big question though, gentlemen, isn't it? Will Cristiano Ronaldo finally get his first goal for Juve? Three games so far, he's yet to find the back of the net. Ooh, Craig. Mm. Will he? <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know. What we do know is he's going to be trying yep. his backside off from every angle he can to get off the mark. Because he's, he's, des he's desperate to get off the mark. You saw it in the last game, uh, for sure, as well. Uh, just not quite happening for him at the moment, but slow start. Craig's right. This is playing on his mind, isn't it? It is, and so it would be most ideal that maybe there was a penalty kick in this oh, game. Oh, yes. <laughs> and there hasn't been one, so Juventus is due for one. They get it, he scores, and not only does he score one, then he becomes three very quickly. Hat-trick for Cristiano Ronaldo Hat -trick? this weekend. That's it. I'm going with Hat -trick. it. Hat-trick, it's all going to be fine, Gab. Yeah, I mean, on paper, you would imagine that this would be it. Uh, you, although you expect Juventus to make a bunch of changes, uh, with, looking ahead to the Champions League, so you wonder if the supporting cast will be there. You know what? I don't think this is going to affect him in any way. I think this is the one where uh, uh, where he breaks his duck. If he doesn't, it's going to be it's going to equal the longest streak without a goal since joining Real Madrid. Ooh. And this is the one. Now, Ooh. we saw this week the launch of the Serie A Awesome podcast. Uh, be sure to download it. Really good. Brings you everything you need to know about Italian football. Barca have just won one of their last eight visits to the Anueta. However, big favourites to make it two wins out of nine. You'd think, Ali, last time we saw Barca in action was that 8-2 victory against uh, Huesca. They've started the season brilliantly. And they've looked great. And they're getting goals from everywhere. And the Vélez has played yep. very well. Uh, Suarez back to scoring goals. Messi doing what he does. But I don't care what team and what kind of player you are. There are certain stadiums and certain places that just don't fit your eye, that you don't feel comfortable in. And Barcelona certainly doesn't feel comfortable in San Sebastián. I know it that does something to this team. Yep. They get into San Sebastián and, and, and they struggle. And it's not just as a group. It's Lionel Messi individually not playing well. And other players then feed off of that and they don't play well either. So they'll be more than happy to go to San Sebastián, even if it's ugly, get a one nothing win and continue on with the rest of the season. This, is, this game they do not like. They don't feel comfortable. They don't like the optics of the stadium. I don't know what it is about, about Anoeta. I don't know what it is about San Sebastián. But it doesn't fit Barcelona. Again, they'll take one nothing and get out of there. Did you have that as a player? Places that you didn't like going to? Yeah. So it is amazing that because you do, sometimes you go somewhere and you, and you, you know, you get a good vibe and a, a good feeling or you play well and you score or whatever it is. Or you go somewhere or another ground and you have a bit of a nightmare and that nightmare continues the following season. Right. And you don't like the atmosphere and it's, it's in your head now. I know uh, people would say, well, you're professional. Uh, football players, how can that be the case? But it is, and, and it does it, it does happen. Uh, it is weird that Barcelona, though, with the players they've got, you'd think it's a ground that they do struggle. Well, they have struggled, but, but that's just the way it is sometimes. And I'm sure Real Sociedad try and use that to their advantage as well. Having said all that, Gab, it really should be three points, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should be. It should also be, you know, a, a little different with, uh, with Valverde in the sense that you know, he can be more direct. Uh, um, uh, he, he can kind of shut up shop uh, if he needs to. Um, part of the reason why Valverde is there, he's supposed to offer that, that greater flexibility. I don't know. Um, I don't buy this whole superstition, curse of the Anoeta thing. I think we're going to see a regression to the mean. Hello and a very warm welcome to Extra Time. It is Friday, ladies and gentlemen. What a lovely, Boom. What a lovely day it is. Yep. Oh, I've lost the questions. No, there you oh, go. Right, so there we'll, you just, are. we'll do what we normally do. We'll, we'll, oh, there we are. We'll, we'll pad while you hey, start no, the right. Gab is here. Hey. Of course, this week saw the launch of the Seria Awesome podcast. Oh. I listened to it, Gab. It needs a desk. Uh, it needs. Um, <laughs> why didn't you? Why, why didn't you let Paolo talk, Gab? <laughs> why didn't I let Paolo talk? <laughs> I let Paolo talk uh, plenty. You need to ask me now why she was bullying Paolo. No. And not letting him speak. I like Mina was giving it to you. I like that, Gam. She didn't let you get away with anything. Unlike you, you jokester. No, she doesn't. No, no. Okay. How many, she she knows what she's talking about. How many podcasts do you do now, Gavin, in a week? Oh, oh. oh. Good question. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 
The show is a podcast, right? So that's uh, four or five right there. Plus the City I one, so... Yeah, you can City hear a awesome. lot of me. City awesome. Your, uh, City awesome. And this is this question is about the title. Right. City right. awesome. All right, one second. Go back to that. Sorry. Right. No, I get Gab. Gab does a podcast for the Times and a podcast. I get people doing the serial our podcast, Seri Awesome. Our show is made into a podcast. I, I understand that. What I don't get. What oh, I don't get. What's it, what's it, what rant are we going on? Now? What I don't get are people who have full time jobs and are very busy. Have feel the need that they have to go out there and go, well, so and so's got a podcast, so, so I'm going to have to go and do a podcast because I need to keep up. And I need to be busy, very busy, very, 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 very busy, and just go and do a podcast. Maybe they like doing podcasts. Maybe they're not as. But I never get understand with people. Certain people, I go, can't they just have a day off? Well, maybe they, maybe they're. You normally finish a show or, or, or a program and say, oh, so I think I'll go home now. And have a beer, or am I going to have a game of golf? Oh no, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and find myself a podcast. I'll tell you what's not going to happen, Greg. <laughs> Chuck is not going to have a podcast. No. <laughs> Stephen Inkle's not going to have a podcast. <laughs> I'm not having one. And I'm not having a podcast. Oh, I'd love a podcast. So, would you? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get. Can we get Hello, that? darling, I'm thinking about doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we talking to? The wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's the woman that you talk to your no wife. It's not my normal re reference point. <laughs> I'm darling, I think I'm never going to do a podcast. <laughs> do a Hello, podcast. babe. Hey, babe. What do you put? I understand, I understand mm. everybody else doing but I understand it for the show and for the series and for all that. I don't understand people <laughs> who just say, I think okay. I'll just go, because people need more in me. I'm just going to go and do a podcast. Right. right ask, what right. was the reference? The question is... What were some of the runner-up names for the new Seria podcast before you went with Seria Awesome, Gab? What, who, won, who, who went for this? I imagine you did with your bullying ways. No, no, no. I, 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 I made some suggestions. I'm not sure what the hierarchy was. I think one of the, uh, um, one of the more popular ones, which the last didn't win, was the, uh, uh, a, a tribute to Craig Burley half hour um, <laughs> that was up there but but you know strangely we didn't we didn't choose that for a city uh, uh, podcast but were there any other names in the hat yeah well what happened is oh, what dear. happened is I, I have this in good authority that it went to uh, the F ESPN FC editorial vote right and the Why are you vote, up there? The, vo <laughs> the vote was uh, 300 to 200. Uh, for ESPN Awesome. Right, or good. Serie Awesome. Thanks for that insight. That was, uh, what point are you trying to make there? I'm, 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 my point is it went down to 500 edit editors. Oh, I see. Right. And uh, 3 million bloggers. Oh, goodness me. And 1,800 journalists. Well, you, sure know, you sure know a lot about podcasts, though. Oh, we're going to be making an appearance on this show. <laughs> very soon. Okay. <laughs> Let's ask a question. Uh -huh. You do that because somebody gave me a bit of stick on Twitter the other day and it really, really hurt. <laughs> Taking it back, yeah. ask a question because oh, I can't answer it. Is the original Ronaldo better than Cristiano? At his best, the original Ronaldo is better than Cristiano. Ronaldo. Both of you would have played against him, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he just didn't return the stats. Yeah, because he wasn't a consistent because his knees and everything. Yeah. Cause, uh, other, lots of things. Yeah. Now he's bought an uh, investor in a club, hasn't he? Has he? Oh, glad to see you're up to speed. <laughs> Valladolid. Valladolid, then. Yeah. Valladolid. I just said that, guy. Yeah, he said it because uh, the producer told him in his ear, because <laughs> you, you haven't got a scooby. No, I, didn't, I didn't know that you had. I, I know that you didn't know that you had. Oh, there you go. It's just, you, you're just probably off at some... Uh, casino or something, wasting your time. People forget how good original. I did, I did go to the was. casino. If you'd yeah. been doing podcasts, no, <laughs> you would have had time to go to the casino, <laughs> lose all my money. You'd have found that out. Ah, oh, dear. Who shows more promise when given minutes, Dybala or Asensio? Oh, Asensio. Mm. Oh. Mm. Although I, I, I don't. I know they were arguing about Dybala on the uh, Seri Awesome. Yes, <laughs> there you go. Not because I've downloaded the Seri Awesome podcast, but I heard it on the clip. <laughs> uh, I think that Dybala's got a lot to offer as well. It's, just, it's a bit more game time, I suppose, for club and country. Gab, you like Dybala. Mina hates him. 
Yeah, Mina really doesn't like Dybala. Um, I, I'd have to say Asensio, and you know what? You can you can make the point that neither Real Madrid nor Juventus necessarily uh, went out and, and and decided to cater to the young stars, but Asensio kind of elbowed his way into this Real Madrid uh, lineup, which is you know three pretty good guys up front last year, plus Isco, plus Lucas Vasquez, plus Modric and Kroos in midfield, and. Uh, you know, he, he basically forced the club to give him the minutes, and uh, and that's something that uh, certainly Dybala, you know, with him it's kind of been the it's kind of been him going in the opposite direction. So I, I'd say Asensio for now. Why does Paolo say Dybala? Because I believe it's Dybala in uh, so the, the the last name is Polish. Obviously he's from Argentina, but he's of Polish descent. And I believe, I, I don't speak Polish, but some people believe that uh, the correct Polish uh, pronunciation is Dybala and not Dybala. So if we were in Poland, we'd say Dybala. What do you mean? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, anyway, so if you were Paolo. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, is that any truth in the rumours, uh, uh, Gab? That, Where that, are we going with this? That Mina was, uh, uh, she's got a, an application for a visa in to come and present the FC show. Thus taking down his minutes on the show to pull a dibbler <laughs> type uh, participation. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I see where you're going there. So that would, uh, I, I, I think the risk here is that she'd be Cristiano Ronaldo and uh, and Dan Thomas would be Dibbler. Is that is that where you're going with this? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Does that does that mean that, would, that you would be hosting the Syria Awesome oh, podcast? Yeah. Oh, That'd be great. I'd be good at that. You could fly you to London oh. and you could go and do a tactics with Stuart Robson. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey, you've got to see Robbo's uh, clip in Liverpool Spurs. He's like a floating head with hands. <laughs> we can't play it in, can we? We haven't got no, it. No, we haven't got it, I don't think. <laughs> the, the black. Uh, That's brilliant. Um, um, be sure to check out Ali, Dibbler, or Dibbler. <laughs> Dibbler, uh, Dibbler, or Asensio. Uh, Dibbler has had ample opportunity. There he is! There he is! <laughs> <laughs> the floating head. Never mind Dibbler, never mind Asensio. Stewie Robson. <laughs> so many ways. <laughs> okay. There it is, there's a head floating around with a tactics ball. Ah, oh, those arms are flowing too. Oh, very nice to meet you, Mr. Dibala Dibala. <laughs> Hop, lad. Hello, darling. Should we do a podcast <laughs> with Dibala? What was you doing today? I was talking about Paolo Dibala. Don't you know the gentleman? <laughs> Who are you talking to now? Who are you talking to? That's it. Have I answered the question? Because I'll get in trouble. Uh, right, we're back uh, tomorrow to reflect on... Um, Liverpool Spurs. Are you in tomorrow? Are you doing digital? I'm doing my own thing tomorrow. You're doing your own thing? Yes. What podcast? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> doing a pod. <laughs>